Yay, and we're live. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to Bitcoin Peace and Music Podcast. This is DJ Valerie B. Love, and I have someone here who is on a mission to create smiles using Bitcoin and her skills as a dentist. Welcome, Dr. Mm -hmm. Susie Riley. What's up? Hey, nothing much. So good to see you again, Valerie. You too. Um, oh my God, I see you've got the little green. Uh, oh my God, dude. That's yeah. So funny. yeah, it's so funny. We're in the process of moving to Hawaii. Uh, we're retiring there. You're moving and to so Hawaii? We are. So Where? Uh, on Oahu in Kaneohe Bay. Oh my God. I used to live on Maui for four years. Ah! Uh, <laughs> so yeah, lucky. we cannot wait. We cannot wait. Oh, good for you. That's the, that's the best. Okay. So you're in the process of moving and sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Just I've uh, been practicing um, dentistry with my husband in Atlanta for almost 26 years now. And um, just have in the last couple of years with COVID and Bitcoin and everything else, we reevaluated our lives and what we wanted out of it and um, just decided to kind of uproot and change everything and have some freedom and enjoy life. Oh my God. It's the best dude. The Aloha yeah. spirit is, is infectious. It'll stay with you forever and ever. Absolutely. And I have a lot of family there, so that just makes it natural to want to go. Oh gosh. You're so lucky. That's incredible. Yeah. Are they Bitcoiners? Uh, they all own Bitcoin. None of them are Bitcoiners. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely think I'm in a cult, but they want a piece of the pie just in case, right? <laughs> it, that, and that's good, you know, it's as long fine. as you, they get a little skin in the game and, you know, mm -hmm. I know my fi my family thinks I'm in a cult too. They think I'm wearing this, what is it, the tinfoil hat, you know? Yep, yep. Um, I just wrote an article called The Bitcoiner's Dilemma. Yes. And it, it's about like the three phases of going through, you know, becoming a Bitcoiner and, you know, how your worldview crumbles, how your, Ugh. you know, certain parts of yourself have to kind of crumble and then your relationships totally change. And it's very, uh, it's a big deal, <laughs> you know, it, it's a big deal. I think, especially for me, who I'm well past middle age and to have that, that whole uh, analogy to the matrix it, it, it is so accurate. And yeah, it, I mean, it, and so often now I just feel like, oh gosh, it's, uh, you know, I feel out of sorts and not comfortable with some of my friends and <laughs> especially being in the medical field. And, you know, I mean, they, and they do, they think I'm wacky and kooky and that I've gone off the deep end. And, but, and I, on the other hand, hand, I'm so frustrated with so many things. Like, how can you not see this? Totally. And, and it's, yeah. it's whatever. It's like when we wake up, we wake up, you know, but it's like, I use the analogy of, you know, it's basic, but it's caterpillar to butterfly. Right. And it's like, when you go through the goo, you have to let go of all these old ways of being and yes. your old, your old crew, you know, who's cruising around on the leaves where you're flying with your wings now, you know? And yeah. So it's, it's hard though. I mean, it's, it's upended my worldview. It's, yep. you know, it, it, it definitely started even a little bit before Bitcoin with the COVID stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I have always believed in all of these things and vaccinations and medical authority and that what we're taught is true. And, you know, and just everything broke down for me to the point. And, and so then I was like, oh, okay. The COVID vaccine is bad, but all the other ones are good. And then I'm like, Oh no, that one's bad too. <laughs> like it just keeps like like breaking down like everything for me. Yeah, yeah. It and and I think it's pretty. You know, it could be destabilizing if you don't have people around you who are on your team. You know, yes. and and support you. Is your husband a Bitcoiner? He is. He just is not. Uh, I always say like so. Uh, we're both gun enthusiasts. So we'll go and we go to the range and those things. And, and I enjoy it. I really do. I love training. I love everything about it. But the last thing I want to do is go to a gun show. And so that's a kind of how, so my husband will read what I ask him to read. He lurks on Twitter. He laughs at me and thinks I'm a goofball and enjoys that. But he has no desire to go to a Bitcoin conference. <laughs> oh my God. But he well, is on I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry, go he, ahead. He is on board to go to a beefsteak now, though. So uh, baby steps, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, and then you get the community and people. So that's that's incredible. So at least he's not like poo pooing you or you know yeah. shutting you he down. Does, or... He trusts me, so that's good. And then I think 
you know, watching me and my interactions on Twitter and the people I've become so close with and, you know, he, he does trust them and understand that he, I mean, he feels brainwashed as well. So he's just a little slower to, to come to this, but slowly then, you know, suddenly then surely. And it's, it's coming. It's coming. I know. Well, and, and then we'll, I won't even be talking about it. Just like we don't talk about the SWIFT system for credit cards. Like who cares? I'm just glad my credit card works. So I'm going to be glad Bitcoin works, you know, in 50 years. Absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I hope it, I mean, that's the, that's, I imagine it's going to, I mean, yeah. How long, well, so how I, long I feel, have you been a bit, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, I feel like I, I see it working on Noster. It, it, it's this little glimpse into, oh, this is how it's going to be. Like, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I feel like it's, it's given me more of a feeling of what what is going to happen with Bitcoin than anything else. I thought El Salvador at first was like, oh, wow, this is it. And I do, but more so with Noster. It just makes so much sense to me. It does. And I know I'm still like playing around and new, but I'm like, oh, you can zap somebody something like value for value instantly. And then they can get a few sats if, if I like their post and they have validation yes. and they're like, oh, let's go make some more of those things. Like it's amazing. And it's amazing. You can't it's- shut down. Like people yeah. who are listening who don't know what Nostra is, you want to tell them? Yeah. It's just a, a decentralized protocol that um, it, it really is censorship free. And it, it, it's this, it is the communication protocol at like Bitcoin would be the monetary protocol. So, and if you go there, you really do get to see, oh, this is how things are when there's no algorithm. I I thought I was free and speaking from, you know, my mind on Twitter and engaging with people that I wanted to. And now that I've been on Noster since January, I realized, oh gosh, I've been manipulated a lot, even on Twitter when I thought I was in control. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating to think of how manipulated we all are in all of these areas. Like even, you know, our phones are listening to us right now and we'll get messages and in, in our ad feed of whatever we were talking about at dinner, yes. you know, and it's really it's terrifying, you know, do you have, are you a mom? Do you have kids? I have four kids. Oh yeah, of course you so, do. It says you have four kids here. Duh. Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. But, mom of four. Yeah. It's been shocking to me to see how much we're manipulated. Not even those obvious things to me. Like I saw something just recently. It was an, a news article, a news story and read the news story. And then the, it was a tweet and the guy said, and then I'm going to, I put it through chat GPT and said, rewrite this news story without any political bias. And it was subtle, but it was huge. And, and it really opened my eyes to how everything I'm reading nowadays is somehow trying to manipulate me. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's exhausting to be like defensive. Like, is this trying to get me to do this thing or think this way or buy this thing or support this agenda? And yes, you know, they, they, you get decision fatigue. And then people throw their hands up and they just go like, screw it. I'm going to go, go over here. And I think it's by design, you know, this, this, this constant barrage of this data and information and certainly misinformation and the negativity. And I feel like our young people are at the mercy because they don't have the filtering mechanisms to understand what's what. And even us adults don't necessarily, right? Absolutely. Like, it's, it's, like yep. you said, it's subtle and it's multi, multi billions and trillions of dollars uh, that are being poured into, you know, the matrix. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, and again, it sounds crazy when I, it's why I'm so thankful for Bitcoiners. Like, you know, I'll be talking to friends and people I really respect and looked up to for years and they'll be like, Oh, it's fine. You're overreacting. You're ch- they call me chicken little now, you know, right, right. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. it's like, but it really is guys. <laughs> it really is. And, but it, it, I mean, I have people who will say, you know, Oh, in terms of the money, you know, look how 2008 worked out. Yes, it was bad, but everything was fine. It'll be fine again. You know, you're, you're about to retire. You're successful. Why are you complaining? Why? And it, 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 it's so hard hard to be with my normie friends who don't get it so uh, it that like I I have my fun and I love goofing around on Twitter and Doster but 
I really am there to help make me not feel crazy as well. Like, <laughs> God, it's high five right there. <laughs> Seriously, it, it, it is lonely. Yeah. I know when I'm not tuned in, I feel kind of, and I, I have to prepare myself if I'm in Normieville and, and I have noticed like my relationships have definitely been altered, you know, and like yeah. where I choose to spend time or not spend time and who I choose to spend time with has been very, uh, it has been changed, you know, and for the better. Cause I like now I'm like, yay, my Bitcoiner crew, that's who I really want to spend time right. with. And so, well, like people like you who are using your skills to help other people. So let's talk about El Salvador and the project yeah. that's going on in El Salvador that you got inspired to participate in. Let's do you want to share? Yeah. So when I went down there in 2021, um, th there is a dentist in El Zante, but very small clinic. And his passion, which is wonderful, is to restore these mouths that have been broken down that, you know, I mean, uh, most of what he's doing is almost every tooth in the mouth is needing repair and and he's doing it and doing a wonderful job. But as I went around the town and started looking at people's mouths and what was going on, you know, I, I saw so many people who just didn't have the education, weren't getting cleanings, a lot didn't have toothbrushes. I didn't see a single mouth, whether it was a three-year-old or a 30-year-old that didn't have several cavities. Mm. And, you know, and when I would be looking, they'd be holding a soda in one hand. And when I talked about brushing their teeth, it was often, um, oh, my parents had bad teeth. So I'm, well, why would I do that? Why would I brush my teeth? And I thought, mm -hmm. okay, something else is needed here. We need some, a little bit of education and a, a, a dental clinic that people can go just get regular care so they don't ever need this major full mouth reconstruction. So fortunately, I found um, someone who she has been uh, born and raised in El Zante, uh, a volunteer at Hope House, and her sister is as well. And one sister is a physician, one sister is in dental school, and the other is, I think she's going to end up going to pharmacy school, although she's th talking about possibly business now. Um, but they will be, uh, and they let me know, we're so thrilled you're doing this with dental, but in El Zante and the surrounding communities of 12,000 people, there's no medical clinic or pharmacy there either. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So, uh, so I met a Bitcoiner at the last adopting Bitcoin and, um, his son had had a medical emergency down there and he said, yeah, we had to get an Uber and drive to get him taken care of. Like they were shocked. And so uh, it's uh, what I want to do with these um, women is has kind of evolved and it's to build a dental clinic, medical clinic and pharmacy that will serve the people of El Zante and expats who are coming to the area. So we're not trying to do um, I, I've done a lot of missions with my husband and, you know, we've done dentistry in uh, plastic lawn chairs and, you know, just uh, uh, whatever we could do to get people's needs met. And that's not what we're talking about. Like we want to build a state of the art clinic that will serve the people there. Is this something just, you know, I know a lot of folks, um, they'll go travel to different countries that have more affordable dental care. Yes. And they'll be like, it's cheaper for me to go to Thailand or to Mexico to go get work done than it is for me to stay here in the United States to get work done. Is there an opportunity for, that to kind of get layered in with Bitcoiners going to El Zonte, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then say, hey, come down and get your dental work done. And then that way it can help promote the, the clinic. Absolutely. So, yeah. and, and I've had so many um, dentists and other medical professionals reach out who want to volunteer. And that is really to get that many needs met. You have, you have to have volunteers who come down and that there's a place to stay and that, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, we want to build it so that it's to the standards of what, how my husband and I have practiced. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many cool, a lot of cool technology with, um, CAD cam technology and printing crowns and things like that, that milling crowns uh, that I think it would provide a lot of jobs. And, and it would be, it, like I said, state of the art care. So yes, people could come down, it would be a fraction of the cost of getting care in the US, but then it could also help subsidize exactly. for locals who want, uh, and, and that is the model we're looking at. Of course, they will accept Bitcoin, but um, it's it's a win-win when the care can be a fraction of the cost in the US, but it 
will also provide, it, it's enough that it could provide help for the community as well. Yeah, big time. I like it to, sub- yeah. to, su- to supplement and subsidize what's going on down there. Yeah, and, and provide I- these women with a good income and that, you know, I, I the, Yes, they're doing this out of the goodness of their heart, but I also, I mean, they put a lot of work into school and what they want to provide. And so I want them to be able to make a good, an income that is a great wage and that they could have housing and all of that as well. Absolutely. I know. I think in the, um, you know, in the healing arts world, a lot of people, you know, if you're, you know, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to just help everybody and heal and help. And it's like, you know, you're supposed to also eat and thrive, have a nice roof over your head, feel safe, feel comfortable and not feel like you have to constantly be struggling. And so yeah, it's so important that we support people who are healers. Absolutely. Otherwise you see burnout. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and- but, but it allows my husband and I, since we are retiring, like, but we love dentistry. We, I, I enjoy the practice of dentistry. I just hate the business of dentistry. And so to be able to use my skills and go down there and not need to make money, but be able to practice what I love, my husband the same way, uh, you know, will be is a blessing for us as well. Uh, That's awesome. What a, how cool to get to do that with your, your beloved, you know, to do your mission. I mean, what a jam. I just, one (laughs) Bitcoin burrito, man, I know you're out there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> absolutely oh my god that's awesome and so like so let's talk about the numbers like because i've got some numbers here do you want me to go over them you do you know them off the top of your head you can go over numbers. them Val. that would be great yeah so the numbers i've got um it says to make this dream a reality the project needs to secure 185,000 us to purchase the land and an additional 515,000 for constructions. So that's 700,000. So all donations are going to be exclusively used for those goals. Um, it says the project founder secured uh, corporate medical partners to contribute equipment and operational needs, but they hope that other Bitcoin enthusiasts will also contribute to building the facility. Yes. So, so when we first started looking at doing this, you know, that was 2021. People were still a little euphoric. I had lots of people who wanted like, to. Hey, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, and now definitely things have dried up. And so uh, I, my hope was to do it through Bitcoin just because I love Bitcoin story in El Salvador. And um, I, I think that if I could get it funded that way, it just would be such a great story. But I think now just with the bear market and realistically, I've realized it's not going to happen. So I am starting to work with other corporate partners and getting um, commitments to help us secure this land. Oh, that's awesome. Is there anything like once the land gets secured, can you do any, um, you know, like a temporary shipping container or something that's just sort of basic so people can kind of get started on stuff or does it have to be a certain level of? Yeah, they, they are pretty strict with certain things and medical waste disposal. And so El Salvador, it does uh, have a lot of um, things that we have to adhere to to get that built. But the land is sort of the pressing thing right now. We have ways that uh, they do have a little clinic area in El Zante that they can provide some care. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're okay, but I just, um, the land is definitely I, what I want to secure to make sure that happens. Are, are you going to be there in November again for the conference? Certainly, yes. And so maybe we could do like a little fundraiser down there, a little event. Absolutely. And so, and now with me going to Hawaii and with the, um, I think surfing getting more popular in El Zante. And I Mm -hmm. I have fortunately my sister who's in the picture with me there. um, She came down, she's a newscaster in in Hawaii. And so uh, she had a lot of contacts and a lot of surfers, professional surfers who are interested in maybe helping with the project and who have never been to El Salvador. So we're trying to, yes, yes. We're trying to get them all involved. Oh, I love it. That's so cool. Maybe she can do a, a new story on it. Yes. Um, that would be awesome. Um, well, how, so how, so people here, so we've got, okay, hold on. I'm going to pull up the website for people. So it's tallycoin.app forward slash at mission med BTC. And so people can donate there and you yes. guys have got, let me go see here. If I click on it, it says visit the fundraiser. Dun, 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 dun. And we are taking, uh, there's no overhead or a hundred percent of every donation will go to either 
purchasing of the land or the actual building of the clinic. So, um, they, you know, we're not paying anybody to work or administrate or provide, you know, do any of the fundraising. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So every, so whoever's listening, every sat you contribute is going straight to the project. And yes. Head. Yes. That's yes. always a bonus. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. And so what is, have, have you guys been in touch with president Bukele? What is he, does he know that you guys are trying to do this? No. So we have had no traction there. We're trying. So, we, uh, but, um, it, it is on our goal and, uh, I, and I'm reaching out just definitely with me. Um, I've gotten spread myself a little thin with wrapping up here with our practice sale and moving to Hawaii. So, but I'm, as soon as June 30th comes, I plan on pouring myself into being a pest and getting on people's radar in El Salvador and elsewhere. Totally. I know it's important to, yeah, the more dots we can connect, I think the more success we get, you know, yes. moving everything forward. So um, yeah, that's incredible. So how did you get into Bitcoin, Susie? So it's interesting. It's um, my oldest, who's 21 now, uh, starting really in 2017. Um, he said, you know, mom, you got to buy some Bitcoin. And I just never had any interest. I had, I believed the news stories that that's for buying drugs on the sure, you know yeah. in dark web. And um, he just, I have to hand it to him. He was uh, tenacious and wouldn't give up. And by 2018, he had put an app on my phone and I just, to get him to stop pestering me. I started buying Bitcoin, <laughs> just, just nominal amounts here uh -huh. and there, but, um, by 20 and I never looked at it. It really was my, my analogy, my simple analogy. It was, it was the coin jar in the corner right. of the room that, Oh, I, you know, I didn't, we didn't go out to dinner this week or, you know, okay, I'll put that towards my Bitcoin this week. And I never looked at it. And then I started shit coining a little bit. I bought ETH on there too, you know, I was, um, but then by 2021, when Tesla made the announcement, I looked at the app and I was like, Oh, Holy cow. I, I've made a lot of money here. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I ended up going full shit coin at that point, because you definitely, if, you don't study Bitcoin. It, it, it's my truth. Um, you think it's just a way to get rich yeah. and you think all it is, is, um, is a way investing. That, that's what you think it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's why I, I credit on every podcast. Every time I talk to people, toxic maxis, it was a toxic maxi on Twitter that shamed me. Uh, he got me right where he needed to, my ego, and said, because I was sort of boasting, like, you know, oh, it's hard to tell somebody who's made a lot of money that you're, that you've done it wrong and that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right? Like, and again, it's ego. It's like, oh, no, totally. like, you're an idiot. I yeah, look what I've you. done. Yeah. Are, are you retiring in the next couple of years? You know, it, oh, it was, it was total ego. And he was like, what Bitcoin books have you read? Mm. I was like, oh, well, I, I've taken a trading, you know, a TA course on, <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and I watched, you know, all these YouTubers and he was like, you're an idiot. Read one Bitcoin book and come back and talk to me and I'll have this discussion with you. Otherwise, I have there, nothing you say interests me. Uh, and and I was like, how dare you? Oh, I was just, oh, and, and so everybody gets their message a different way. I had had other people tell me, you should read the Bitcoin standard. You should read, you know, I, I had had that. Read 21 lessons. Read, And that wasn't the way that message was going to reach me. I needed a kick, you know, in the gut to my ego. And so I did. I, I, I downloaded the Bitcoin standard that night. You know, I was just like, okay. And, and the light bulb was immediate. It wasn't 24 hours for me that I was like, oh, and it, it started me on the rabbit hole and this changed everything for me. I mean, from diet, from uh, I, I thought I loved the hamster wheel and growing our practice and needing a bigger practice and then a bigger home and more cars and then fancier cars and the kids at the fanciest schools and where are we going to vacation and it really made me reevaluate our life and what are we doing? So I'm just, I'm so thankful to have my eyes opened and just to 
live a different life. And I, and I credit Bitcoin and my son will never let me live down that I owe that all to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's not like, yep, that's me, man. Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh my God. That's awesome though. I love hearing the story and I love how quickly you got it, you know, like yeah. what, so what was it? I'm just curious. What was it in reading that, you know, the safety needs book that, that <clears throat> what, you know, was the trigger in that 24 hours? It was that I really did not understand what money was. Mm. I, 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 not, not, I guess it not that I didn't understand, but I had never thought about it and how, rigged the system is you know mm. I think when you've done well and I always sort of believed if you work hard you're gonna succeed and that's all it takes and to see younger people struggle and that Bitcoin it's not an investment it's a change to the system that's something I never even remotely thought about that's like oh that's a perfect I gotta put that in the little snippets quote you know it's not an investment it's a change to the system and it, it is it truly is because I know most most of us you know like you said you kind of got in and your shit coin and a number go up yay this is great and and then when you do realize like it is the system this monetary system is rigged and no matter how if you hold three jobs some people are still not able to keep their head above water. And so they're mentally and physically and spiritually and emotionally dehydrated and struggling. Yes. You know? And it's because yes. of the system. It's not because they're not trying hard. It's not because they don't believe in God or any, you know, they're not good people. It's the system is rigged. Absolutely. And I had started seeing it with, with the medical system and that people really being deliberately misinformed. I, when I saw the campaign against ivermectin, which I, 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 which I had prescribed before as a dentist uh, and it saved my father's life. And wow. so when I saw the misinformation campaign, it really, it, had they said it didn't work, I don't think I would have ever dug deeper when they totally changed the narrative that this is a drug for animals. It's a veterinary drug. Mm. I'm like, why would they do this? Why would they misinform the public and try to trick and that is what I realized what was happening with the financial system. I was like, oh, wait a minute. You know, and we have financial advisors and a wealth manager and those things. It's like, oh, it really is not that complicated. But a lot of this verbiage and wordage, we are made to feel like we can't understand it. Why would we study it? We need these people to do it for us. And it, it, I, I, it all started to come together for me is that this is made to sound complicated by design mm -hmm. so that we can't ever empower ourselves. And I think that's why legacy finance is so terrified of Bitcoin is because they're, once you start studying, I, I just always tell people that I orange pill, you need to read, you need to study and not just listen to, you know, some crypto influencer on, uh, on YouTube once you study, you uh, you understand that you can do this. You can understand this. And it really doesn't have to be this complicated. Yeah, it's true. And I think it's so important that we remember that. And I know a lot of people, particularly, you know, artists, musicians, you know, the hippy dippy community that I'm a part of, because I yeah. <laughs> are like, oh, money, it's scary. And crypto, that's bad. It's scammy and all this stuff. And I'm like, it's like air. You must learn how to use money, finances, Bitcoin, whatever it is. Like this is unavoidable of being a human. So why not get, take a little time and not be afraid of it. It's math. It's okay. Yes. It's not going to hurt you, you know? And I think it's overcoming those old stories about, oh, I'm not good at math or I'm not good at this, you know? And it's like, it's okay. You don't have to be or Einstein just being, or, you know, it's yeah. like, but it is intimidating. I mean, here I am in my 50s, you know, I've had a successful business where investors, real estate investors, commercial real estate investors. And uh, I, I did not know till two years ago that the Federal Reserve is not a government entity. <laughs> That's how clueless I was. You know, I, 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 and the number of people I orange pill who will say, oh, well, Bitcoin isn't worth anything. OK, what's what's the dollar worth, you know, well, it's backed by gold. I hear that all the time. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. It's and I know. crazy. And, and people don't. And then when you start telling them, it's like, no, it's not. And it's just backed by the word of the government. And hopefully they'll like, I got you. I'll pay you back. It's like, yep. it's monopoly money. 
Yes. People don't get in like that when you start understanding proof of work and why we need all this energy to secure this network. And we talk and I'm, I'm an environmentalist. I love the earth. I don't want yes. to die. I want the nature to be clean. I want us to have, you know, nuclear and renewable energy same, that, make, same. that makes yes. sense, yes. you know, but I also want money that's not hackable, you know, and I want yeah. it to be a network that's not controlled by the, the dude. Who's the dude in the biz? Uh, Augustine, Augustine Carson. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> I don't want him touching on oh, my life. Uh uh, get out of here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, Isn't no. it interesting, though, uh, Valerie, like that he looks the way he does? I mean, that sounds so horrible, but it's like, it's so fiat. It's so. It's so, so. No, high, the high absence of proof, proof of work. Absence of proof of work. <laughs> so high, tie, high time preference, you know, yeah. now, 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 whatever it is. And yeah. it, it's just, I, I know, I, I feel it is. It, his. He he reflects that value system. He re- yes. his 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 he reflects that value system, and so yeah. Um, yeah. And the whole and, and the whole environmental fund makes me crazy. Again, I think it's something that we're made to not understand. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, you, before Bitcoin, I never knew that uh, surplus of energy is a problem, or how much energy is wasted. That is just like, or that you know that these. Uh, EPA regulations are just sort of arbitrary. <laughs> I mean, I, all of this stuff, I, I just, it's, it, you realize it, it's not to make anything better. It's to enrich people and to promote a narrative. Yeah. It's to enrich a few people. And, and I think it is, it's such a challenge. And I was, I, I forget who I was talking to yesterday, but we were talking about how important, you know, because obviously Bitcoin, like we are the Bitcoin marketing department, right? Like yeah. each one of our voices, you know, in, in this beautiful distributed network. And and if we don't stay ahead of the narrative, like the New York Times thing that came out, you know, it's like, then we're always on our back foot playing defense. Yeah. You know? And so having skillful people, you know, out there putting the, 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 the data forward first so that we're not in defense mode, um, is super important. And it's like, this whole community is so generous with their time and their experience and their wisdom. And it's just like, I've never met more people who are on this, on a mission to do something great with so many unique skill sets, you know, that that are so different. And wanting to share and educate. It was the biggest eye opener for me with Bitcoiners that they were always trying to teach me something. And it wasn't telling me, it was you need to go do this. And this is what I'm, you know, go look at this, go talk, you know, dig deeper into this. And I yeah. so appreciate that. Me too. And I, it certainly taught me to be a much more generous human, you know, and I want to yeah. emulate other people. Cause I'm like, Oh wow, this is how they're okay. I got to go do that too. I want to level up my game, you know, cause, cause it's so inspirational, you know, and it's not just pie in the sky inspiration. It's like, you see results, you know, isn't it? So, but doesn't that go back to isn't a free market? I mean, that's isn't it beautiful that it, mm-hmm. you're blessed and you get then you want to bless others. And I, I just yeah, it's everything about it, it inspires me and excites me. Yeah, me too. I know. I feel like it's nice to know you and it's nice to know all the folks like us who are, you know, yeah. wearing the tinfoil hats. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but really whoever's listening if you're not a bitcoiner yet you know it's it's not that scary do one step at a time and every single person is you know on the mission together so feel free to ask like everyone always wants to help yeah yeah definitely it's important so okay so dr Susie, where can everybody we can find you on Twitter at Susie B D D S. yes Susie B D D S. yay <laughs> and then um and then we want everybody to go to tallycoin.app forward slash at mission M E D B T C and go make some donations so we can get this this uh, medical, dental, and pharmacy clinic built down in El Zonte, which is Bitcoin Beach, guys. That's where yes. that's where it all started uh, for El Salvador. So get your tushies down there too and go go take a journey. It's so yeah. beautiful, right? It's, it's so, so amazing. It's so Not cool. even just the scenery. I just the the spirit there. The yeah, it, it is impossible to convey unless you go down there. It really, yeah. I went down and I got to go this last year for the conference and I got, yeah. I went to El Zonte and then I, I met some folks and they're like, stay for another week. And I'm like, uh, 
yes. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> I was did? so lucky said- that I was able to get, yeah, I was able to get childcare and dog care back at home. Oh, that's and, fabulous. So I stayed and it was just it was so nice to just be there and be around the people. And when, without the conference going on too, you know, it's yes. one thing when all the Bitcoiners are down there, it's another to be there when it's more chill. And so yeah. I highly recommend taking a trek down there if you're if you're a Bitcoiner, like go go see what it's all about for sure. Um, yeah, and for anybody who is worried about safety, I've been down seven times now. Seven uh, twice, times? Oh my god! Twice, twice with my family and then by myself, and I just have never now, especially in San Salvador, you want to be cautious. But yeah. in El Zante, I've been out at nine p.m. at night and have never had an issue. Cool. Yeah, I felt the same way. I felt really safe walking around. I mean. It's like anywhere. You're not going to just go out there and like paste money on your forehead, but yep. you know, it's like being yep. an intelligent human anywhere you go on the planet. So yep. yeah, but it's really, really beautiful. So yay. Well, I'm so glad that you're going to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. you're so lucky. <laughs> um, Come and visit Valerie. <laughs> oh, you know, I will I, I can't wait to get out back out to the, the Aloha state. What, um, any final words you have for, for new and upcoming Bitcoiners? Uh, definitely if you are a Bitcoiner and you haven't checked out Noster, I'm just so passionate about it and see it as, um, the future hit me up, tell me you heard me here and I'd be happy to send you some sats, zap you and, um, yeah, get you excited about being there too. Oh, I love it. I love a little yeah. Noster plug right on. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and taking time to, to share your story, Susie. This is amazing and inspirational and, uh, I'm so glad we're on the mission together. Yay. Yep. So great to talk to you. (laughs) You too. All right, everybody. Peace, love, and warm aloha. This is DJ Val with Bitcoin Peace and Music. Thanks, Susie. All right. (laughs) Woohoo. Yay.